Hi, this is Pete. In this short video, I want to share a fun Python project that I just completed. Basically, I wrote a Python script that can automate a very challenging task in a popular video game. The game is called Dead by Daylight, and I was playing with family, and we were getting beat badly, and someone made the crazy challenge. What if you could automate the hardest part of this game? It was a pie-in-the-sky idea, and I didn't think it was possible, but why not give it a shot? In this video, I'm going to go over a short intro about the game to give context. What I wanted to automate with Python. The first attempt and its results. The second attempt and its results. How the algorithms actually work. And then the Python libraries that I used. Alright, so in the game Dead by Daylight, four players have to work together to escape a small map that has a monster that is hunting you. The four players cannot fight back. There's no weapons, no defenses, and no offensive capabilities except running away. However, most of the monsters are actually faster than the players, so stealth and teamwork is key. To make it more challenging, on this small map, you can only escape after repairing five generators, turning the power on, and opening an electrical door. In essence, the monster has all of the advantages, making it a very challenging game. In addition, when repairing the five generators, you have to pass skill checks. During a skill check, basically you get one second to perfectly time when a fast-moving arrow is going to hit a target box, which is random. If you fail, the generator takes damage, and the monster can see exactly where you're at. If you succeed a skill check, you continue to repair the generator. And for each generator, there can be up to 5 to 10 of these skill checks. The skill checks are also random while you're repairing a generator, both in when they appear and where the target box is located. In essence, everything in the game pivots around these skill checks. But keep in mind, you have to do this while listening and watching for the monster who is actively looking for you and knows that you will probably be near generators repairing them. Let's watch a quick example of a skill check. This is what happens when you succeed. And this is what happens when you fail. As a new player, my success rate on skill checks was 20%, which is pretty bad. So when the challenge was made to be able to automate these skill checks, the first thing that came to mind was using Python. And if you're not familiar with Python, it's a programming language that can do a lot of stuff. So my first attempt was to brute force process the video and detect when the red line was over the white hitbox. In essence, for each screenshot, I wanted Python to count the number of white pixels in that screenshot, and when the number of white pixels went down a certain percentage, I wanted Python to realize that the red arrow was on top of the hitbox and to press the spacebar. Now this method is easy to conceptualize, it made sense, and it was fairly straightforward to program in Python. However, the cons was that this approach can only detect when the arrow is already in the target box. Now this is risky in the sense that you have fractions of a second to act. In addition, this method needed to process screenshots really fast. Again, because you have fractions of a second in which the red line is over the hitbox. And to be able to capture that, a screenshot with that occurring requires a very fast process rate. Another negative to this approach was that while you're using it, you need to hold perfectly still so that you don't change the number of white pixels in the frame or in the screenshot. Imagine if you're looking around and changing the background, you could easily mess this script up. So this basically prevents you from being able to look around for the monster, which is a significant tactical weakness in the game. So I completed this algorithm and then tested it. I tested it across four maps, and the algorithm had a 100% success rate on two of the maps that had low lag. However, on the other two maps, it had a 0% success rate and basically failed miserably. In post-analysis, when I was trying to figure out what had caused it to fail, I discovered that on the two successful maps, it had a frame per second rate of 30. On the two maps that it failed on, it only had 20 frames per second. So doing the math, if you only have 20 frames per second, you, the algorithm can easily miss when the red arrow will actually be on top of the hitbox because it's moving so fast. Literally, you could take a snapshot before it hits the hitbox, and then the next snapshot, the red arrow is past the hitbox, which is why the algorithm was failing. If you have low lag, this algorithm was working perfectly. However, a 50% success rate was not good enough for me. So I consolidated what I had learned, I brainstormed some ideas with some other engineers and programmers, and I found a great new approach to try. And that leads us to attempt number two. 
For the new approach, in each snapshot, I wanted to detect if the skill check is present, detect the location of the target box and convert its location to degrees on a circle, detect the location of the red arrow and determine the degrees of its location on a circle, subtract the difference in degrees between the two, calculate the appropriate wait time based on a consistent velocity of the arrow movement per degree, and then hit the space bar at the appropriate time. So with this approach, only one screenshot is needed to calculate exactly when to hit the space bar. In essence, it was no longer dependent on how much lag was present. One of the secrets for this approach was to use image subtraction, which I'll discuss a little bit more later. Basically, it voids out everything in the screenshot that is not relevant, giving the person the ability to look around while the script is running. As we discussed earlier, this is extremely important tactically to be able to assess when the monster is coming after you. One of the cons for this approach was that it was far more complicated to execute. However, let's take a look at the results. I tested it across 30 separate matches and had a 99.9% .9 success rate across all maps. All right, so for those of you that are very interested in the actual details of the algorithm, let's deep dive. And the first attempt in algorithm one, the key was fast image processing. Again, the whole essence of the algorithm was dependent on how fast you can process screenshots. Instead of trying to process the entire screen, I figured out exactly the coordinates of where the skill check shows up, as that's the only thing that we care about. So now that each screenshot that is taken only includes that particular part of the screen so that we can process it. This speeds things up and just makes the algorithm more efficient. So I captured screenshots using PIL or Pillow in Python. I then converted that screenshot to a NumPy array and focused on a NumPy array that could actually just represent the brightness of each pixel. I didn't care about the actual color. And if you're unfamiliar with image processing, basically each color has three values to distinguish its actual color. So it has a red value, a green value, and a blue value. And the combination of these three gives you the actual color. Now the values of these three, of red, green, and blue, range from 0 to 255. To simplify things, I converted to a NumPy array that just showed the brightness. So instead of having three different values for red, green, and blue, you get just one value for brightness. Again, because all I cared about was the white pixels, and you assume that they will have the highest one-dimensional value. So once I had that NumPy array that was a conversion from the screenshot, I was able to count the number of pixels that were above a certain brightness threshold. So then as you get more screenshots, you can continuously track and detect when that count drops below a predictable number, which signifies that the red arrow is now impacting the number of white pixels in that screenshot. At that point, you hit the space bar and you rinse and repeat. On servers that have low lag, the algorithm can process 30 screenshots per second which was enough to catch the overlap of the red arrow on the white box. However, on a laggy server, the algorithm was only getting about 20 frames per second in terms of how much it could process. And in this scenario, it was highly likely that the algorithm would completely miss the red arrow even being on the white box. When I tested this algorithm on four servers, 50% or half of the servers were laggy. So in other words, this algorithm fell 50% of the time. However, on servers that did not have much lag, the success rate was 100%. And for obvious reasons, it wasn't very reliable, so I decided to find a better solution. For algorithm two, I also captured snapshots using Pill or Pillow in Python. Again, I was focused only on the part of the screen where the hitbox shows up or where the skill check shows up. So once a screenshot was taken, it was converted to a NumPy array. And instead of focusing on a one-dimensional brightness effect, I actually wanted to process the color for this algorithm. Again, each color, each pixel has three separate values, red, green, and blue, to signify exactly what color it is. So once the image was converted to a NumPy array, now we know the exact color combination of red, green, and blue for every single pixel in that picture. To speed things up, I also performed a image subtraction from a master screenshot so that I could void out everything that I didn't care about processing. 
In other words, for inside the circle, I don't care about, and outside the circle, I don't care about. I was only concerned with a very thin profile of 360 degrees that signified the circle. So for image subtraction to work, what I needed to do was create a master screenshot, which basically has a typical screenshot, but with everything that I don't care about whited out. And why? Well, because white has a red, green, blue value of 3, 255, in other words, the max value. So 255, 255, 255. So with image subtraction, it's exactly how it sounds. You take one image or one array of numbers and you subtract another image from it. So if you have, let's say, an image that is just white pixels, every pixel in that screenshot or in that image has red, green, and blue values of 255. In other words, the max level for each one. So if you take that and then now you subtract out another image that has other colors that are not maxed out at those values, you will get whatever's left over. So by using white in the areas that I don't want to process and I don't care about, you basically void out any pixels in that second image. It basically blacks it out completely. So now your algorithm doesn't even need to process it or worry about it, thus speeding things up and making things a lot more simple. To make this easier to understand, let's take a look at a quick example. On the left, you see the master image. Again, note that there's white pixels in the middle of the circle and on the outside of the circle. That's the stuff that we want to delete in the image that we compare it to. On the right, you see a screenshot of an actual skill check. Again, the center of the circle we don't care about. The outsides of the circle we don't care about. We only care about the track around the 360 degrees of the circle. So when you subtract these, this is the image that you get. Note that the center of the circle is black and the outsides are also black. Because again, we don't care about that. We want to make sure that we filter those pixels out. So once we have the subtracted image, now we can count the number of pixels that are white. In addition, we can also figure out what is the mean coordinates of those pixels. And by doing so, we can figure out the center point of where that hitbox is. We can also do the same thing with the red arrow. We can set a particular filter of red, green, and blue of certain values that translate to a red arrow. And then Python can figure out where those pixels are. In addition, we can then figure out the center point of those pixels. Now, once we have both the center point of the white hitbox and also the center point of the red arrow, we can figure out exactly what coordinates or what angle both of these guys are at. Once we figure out the angle of each one, we can subtract the degrees and figure out how many degrees on a circle are in between them. Once we have that piece of data, we can multiply that angle difference by a travel speed to figure out exactly when to hit the spacebar. So let's take a quick look at how this algorithm actually works. As you can see, I was able to zero in and precisely hit exactly where I wanted to in the same spot in the hitbox. All right, so finally, let's talk about the Python libraries that were used. I used Pill or Pillow to take the screenshots. I used NumPy to convert the screenshots to mathematical arrays. I also used OpenCV or CV2 for image processing. I also used PyHook to detect when I wanted to turn the script on and off for convenience. I used Threading to watch for on-off key presses. And I used DEC to store and record test data to see what was going on. So in summary, this was a very fun project. I thought it was impossible. However, I decided to go for it, and it was a ton of fun. Thank you for watching this video, and if you have any questions, please let me know.